Gymnosperms. 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 Hi, my name is Alex Cadmus, and today we are going to be discussing Gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are plants with seeds that do not flower. Just like any other plants, they photosynthesize to get their energy. They take in carbon dioxide and fixate it to form natural organic sugars. But there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. Did you know that gymnosperm products are used in paint, varnish, soap, and perfumes? Now, you may think that gymnosperms have been here forever, but you're wrong. Let's take a look at their roots. Gymnosperms evolved from a fern relative somewhere between 409 and 363 million years ago. However, it wasn't until 225 million years ago that they established dominance over the entire planet. In fact, they were the primary source of food for dinosaurs. Now at this point, you are probably wondering, what is the gymnosperm life cycle like? We'll take a look at this. Gymnosperms have seeds. These seeds form when male haploid microspores in the form of pollen or motile sperm are transported to the female haploid ovule, either on the same plant or a different one. The seed is then the mature fertilized ovule. Take a look at this cycle for the pine tree. Gymnosperms do not have ovaries. Instead, they have ovulate cones with single scales called sporophylls, where meiosis occurs to form the female megaspore. At the same time, meiosis occurs in the male pollen cone to form the haploid pollen grains. When the male microspores leave the pollen cone and find a female megaspore, they enter the female gametophyte, a haploid structure that forms gametes, through a pollen tube. Then, fertilization occurs. The diploid embryo, called a sporophyte, begins to develop and soon you have a seedling that develops into a mature tree. This whole process is known as alternation of generations, and in gymnosperms, the dominant phase is the diploid sporophyte. Gymnosperms can be further categorized into four main classifications. The first of these is the cycads. There are 300 different species of cycads, and they are all perennial, which means they live and reproduce for many years. They are woody and have palm-like leaves, which is why they are often mistaken for palm trees. In addition, they are dioecious, meaning that the male and female reproductive structures are found on different plants. They can be found all over the world, but they mostly reside in South America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, and they are known for being able to survive in desert-like environments, living on sand and even rocks. In addition, cycads do not have pollen. Rather, they have motile sperm that actually swim to the ovule unlike the wind-blown pollen. Another interesting fact is that these plants often host cyanobacterium in their roots, making them very efficient nitrogen fixators. The starch that is produced by cycads is consumed by some indigenous tribes, but it is thought that regular consumption of cycad starch may lead to lytico-bodig disease, a neurological disease with symptoms similar to those of Parkinson's disease. The next main group is the ginkgos. There is only one species of ginkgo. It is recognizable by its split, fan-shaped leaves. Just like the cycads, ginkgos have motile sperm instead of pollen. These plants are often seen along sidewalks, especially because of the intense yellow color they turn in the fall. They have a high resistance to disease, insects, and air pollution, and they are found all over the world. Ginkgos are the subject of intense research because of their longevity. In over 270 million years, there have been no obvious changes in the plant, at least based on fossil evidence. However, it is difficult to obtain DNA from the fossils we have, so it is nearly impossible to compare present-day and prehistoric ginkgos at the genetic level. The next group we're going to look at is the netophytes. While they are probably the least well-known of the gymnosperms, 
Nidophytes are extremely interesting because of every other non-flowering plant, they are the most closely related to angiosperms, the flowering plants. We can be confident they are closely related because just like angiosperms, nidophytes undergo double fertilization. This means that two sperm, in the form of pollen, enter the ovule during reproduction. One fertilizes the egg, and the other fertilizes another cell in the ovule. It is still controversial as to whether nidophytes should be grouped with gymnosperms or a sister group of angiosperms because of this close relation. There are 90 different species of nidophytes, and they can be put into three main groups. You have the netum, which are woody climbers found in tropical rainforests. Then there is the genus Welwitschia. This genus only holds one species, and it is only found in the deserts of Angola and Namibia. This unique plant only has two long, strap-like leaves for its entire life. Then finally, there are the ephedra. These have long, thin branches with tiny, scaly leaves. This plant can be used as a stimulant, but it is a controlled substance in most places because of the harmful results of overdosing. The final group of gymnosperms is the conifers. There are over 700 species of conifers. These include pine trees, firs, cedars, yews, spruces, cedars, and redwoods, to name a few. These plants are monoecious meaning both male and female reproductive structures are found on the same plant. In addition, conifers have pollen instead of sperm, which enter the ovule through a pollen tube. These plants can be found naturally almost everywhere in the world and are generally the dominant plant in their habitat. Conifers hold immense economic value, being used for timber and paper production. The leaves of conifers can be long, thin, and needle-like, or flat, triangular, and scale-like. These leaves have lines or patches of stomata, holes that allow gas exchange in the leaf, which can be closed in dry or cold conditions. Additionally, the leaves of many conifers are dark green, which probably helps absorb the maximum amount of sunlight at high latitudes. Conifers are also almost all evergreen, keeping their leaves year-round. Another unique fact about conifers is that many of them secrete resin, which protects them from insects. This resin will over time fossilize into amber. There are over 1,100 species of gymnosperms, and they hold incredible ecological importance. They are the most dominant plants over vast areas of land, and without them, the planet could not exist. Because of their significance, both today and as the oldest living seed plants, gymnosperms are the subject of constant research. Grandiose initiatives are being taken to map the genomes of the conifers, a process that is not complete but underway. Ginkgo has been sequenced, being found to have 256 genes that match those of other gymnosperms. Additionally, nettophytes have been found to have 119,726 base pairs that code for 101 genes. Cycads are found to have 1,310 genes that match to other gymnosperms. However, in an attempt to further understand the evolution and relationships between plants, genetic research in gymnosperms likely has a large future ahead of it. So the next time you pass by a pine tree, think about what you learned today and know that it plays a much more integral role in your life than you may realize. And remember, gymnosperms are your friends.